reading Psalm 29, a Psalm of David. You divine beings, give to the Lord, give to the Lord glory and power, give to the Lord the glory due his name, bow down to the Lord in holy splendor. The Lord's voice is over the waters, the glorious God thunders, the Lord is over the mighty waters. The Lord's voice is strong, the Lord's voice is majestic. The Lord's voice breaks cedar trees. Yes, the Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon jump around like a wild bull, makes Syrian jump around like a young wild ox. The Lord's voice unleashes fiery flames. The Lord's voice shakes the wilderness. Yes, the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The Lord's voice convulses the oaks, strips the forest bare, but in his temple everyone shouts glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the floodwaters. The Lord sits enthroned king forever. Let the Lord give strength to his people. Let the Lord bless his people with peace. Thank you. For us, uh, please join me in prayer. Lord, may the words of our lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today is Youth Sunday. So why is Sam standing up here right now, right? Sit down. Be quiet, Sam. Well, don't worry, I'm not going to be up here for much longer. Um, I'm just here to set the stage and and kind of get things set before uh, Amy comes up to share with you. So today's theme uh, has a lot to do with the journey of faith. And who better to show show us the highs and lows of that journey than the disciples? We learn a lot of uh, life lessons from the disciples. When we encounter them in this story, a lot has already happened. And yet the story is really very significant because this is the first time uh, in the Gospel of Matthew where the disciples recognize Jesus and name him as God's son. So let me break that down for you. Jesus was baptized, and a voice from heaven declares, this is my son, who I love. He goes on, Jesus goes on to call disciples and heal people, a lot of people. He teaches the law unlike anyone else before. He calms a storm, casts out demons, feeds 5,000 people but now they think he's God's son. Uh, It takes walking on water, and even then, they begin to doubt shortly afterwards. So sometimes we experience doubt. We struggle and and aren't sure how to uh, grasp certain things that are unseen. So that's a difficult part of our journey, but today, rather than ignoring that or trying to kind of just pretend it's not real for us, we're gonna lean into that. So I'd like to introduce Amy Bray, Amy has prepared a personal message and testimony for you all, and I'm, I'm certain that it is going to be um, very meaningful uh, for all of you to hear. So, Amy, uh, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> I've never had that happen before. <laughs> well, thanks for saying hi. I'm about to be a junior in high school, so I'm kind of a young kid but not exactly a little kid. So I've gone through a lot of things in my life and I've had a lot of experiences with my parents and my friends and my brothers. And I think when we, whenever my family has people over for dinner, they love to tell the story. Like, is it just a family thing when they purposely try to embarrass you just for fun? So when I was like 11, my, I was going into sixth grade and my brother was going into college. And it was the first time I had ever been left home alone for, like, more than an hour. It was a huge deal. They were all the way in Denver. They were so far away. So I thought it would be super fun to, like, cook. So I was hanging out in the kitchen, and I get out the flour. And then I get out the eggs and the milk and the water. I don't know what I was trying to make. There was no recipe involved. And so I make this dough-type substance, and it was really fun to stick my fingers in. It was gooey. And then I wanted to watch TV. So I took my messy dough into the TV room, and it gets in the carpet on our really nice leather couches. And then I decide, all right, it's time for bed, and leave my mess. So my parents come home, and there is flour cemented into the carpet. It's on the ceiling. I don't know how I did it, guys. (laughs) But I made a mess. And lo and behold, I did not get to stay home alone for a few years. (laughs) And whenever I get left home alone, 
I'm gonna be 17 soon. I still get told, don't touch the flower. So, needless to say, my parents had lost some faith in me, um, which leads right into sometimes we lose faith in God. It's not, God doesn't always put flour all over our kitchens, but sometimes we lose people that we love and we don't understand it. And it's hard to see that it's for a greater purpose. And sometimes we lose friends and they decide they don't want to talk to us anymore. And we get in fights with our parents and we stomp up to our rooms and we feel alone. Or as a parent, you get in a fight with your child. It's, it's really hard. On a daily basis, things come and they beat you down. And sometimes it doesn't feel like they're ever going to stop. And a lot of times when that happens, when you feel like a wave hits you, wave after wave, and you can't regain your balance, you feel alone. And you don't understand how God could let this happen to you. A lot of times, God lets us fall. And instead of asking why, we choose to blame him. I know one day I was, well, it was a night. It was probably 3 a.m. I think it was my freshman year, so two years ago. I was sitting in my room, and it was dark. It was quiet, and I felt so alone. I felt like nobody in the world cared what I had to say. And then I prayed, and I didn't feel like God cared. I didn't feel like he was there. And I felt so alone, and I had never, ever forgotten that feeling. But I've learned, I was on a mission trip last summer, and Katie Diaz was sitting behind me in the van. I had my neck turned towards her. They, it hurt. It was the most uncomfortable seating position ever. And we had like an hour and a half long conversation. And I still remember the most important thing Katie ever told me was that with God, it's a relationship, which is my first point. And it's one of the most important things that I have to say. That it's okay to question and it's okay to be angry sometimes. And it's okay to talk to God. Everybody has different ways of communicating with God. One of my pathways into that is music. I love to play music and write music, but I also love to listen to it, which I think is a way that God communicates with me. For some people it's writing, some people it's praying, some people it's just talking and saying, why God, why, why did this have to happen? And sometimes this is the hardest answer I ever got. Sometimes we're never gonna know. Sometimes you're just not going to know why the person you love had to die or why you lost your dog last week. Or Sometimes you're never going to know those things. And it's okay to ask and wonder. But at some point, you have to lean into trust. It's called a faith. And a faith is not something built on what you see. And it's not something built on something tangible, it's right in front of you. A faith is built on trust, and it's built on relying on something that you feel is going to be there for you. And it's really hard to have a faith when you feel alone. Um, and then you have to learn how to cope with your doubt. A lot of times when you go to church every Sunday, and for me, when I went to youth group, I played music for them every night, every Sunday. It was hard for me to be like, hey, Sam, I have some doubts about my faith. I don't know if I'm really being as genuine as I should be. And that was hard for me to go through. But I realized that it's all part of a path and that everybody has a different journey with their faith. A lot of people have similar experiences and a lot of people have are in similar stages. And that's where my second point comes in, where coping and with your doubts and fears comes with what stage of your faith you're in. On this last mission trip this summer, we went to Detroit, and I got the opportunity to talk to a different youth leader. He was a pastor of a church in Michigan. And I got to ask him a lot of questions that I, I've always had about my faith and that I like to get different answers and different perspectives to. And then I came up with my, there are a lot of theories of faith stage development. You can Google that and just go galore on, on that, like just website after website. But I came up with one that's more personal to me. 
and it's more of a visual. I love the mountains, but I also love to go to the beach. I love to put my toes in the sand and try and get tan, but I, I never get tan. Um, but that's one of my favorite things to do. And think about, imagine you're standing on the shore, your toes are in the sand, and you're looking out at this amazing, beautiful ocean. It's huge, and it goes as far as you can see to the left and to the right. You see beautiful waves, and you see whales flapping their tails, and you don't know what's inside the ocean, though. It's beautiful. And for me, that was kind of how I was raised. I was raised in a faith, and I could see God. Of all the miracles God performs in the Bible, he heals the sick. He he helps those who feel alone. He makes the outcasts feel valuable. Of all the things I heard in the Bible, it was like a beautiful ocean laid out in front of me. But I had never touched the water. I didn't know what it was really about. I had never felt it. And then I figured out that I wanted to feel it. So I was in the shallow where the waves constantly crash. Sometimes the waves are bigger. Sometimes they're small and they're not high tide, low tide. You know, does it depend on the moon? I, I don't know. But sometimes the waves hit so hard and they never stop and you feel so alone. And you're like, God, why am I stuck in this endless cycle of pain and heartbreak and loss? And sometimes you don't understand and you get really angry. But then you look around you, the waves that hit you sucked you so far out into the ocean, you're in the calm, deep waters. You can put your head below the surface and see thousands, millions, I don't know how many fish are in the ocean, but tons of fish and there's beautiful coral. And there are scary things though. There are sharks, there are octopus. I mean, I don't know all the scary things in the ocean either. I, Really never looked under there that much. <laughs> but it's scary out there. But you're calm. And when I was probably five years old, my dad always told me that I'll float in salt water because of who knows what. I really don't like science at all. <laughs> I like to write and speak. Um, but I, I always knew that I would float in the water. And sometimes we will get dragged below the surface. Maybe a shark bites your ankle and you're, you're tugging it out. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what your struggle is going to be. I don't know what my struggle is going to be. But I know that there's going to be another time where I fall beneath the surface. But every time a wave hit me, it made me stronger. I play basketball, and we have to do weightlifting sessions, which means we have to do three to five minute planks. Those things are awful. You're, you're sitting there on your elbows, your forearms, and every second you think, I want to go home and sleep. And it's the worst. I don't want abs that bad. <laughs> but then at the end, I'm stronger. And maybe it was worth it. Well, it was worth it because I'm stronger. And even though every second of that, was dreadful, I came out better afterwards. And every single time I do a plank, it's gonna get easier and I'm gonna continue to get stronger. And it's the same with your faith. And so sometimes we, when we feel like we're beneath the water, we have to give ourselves the confidence that we are capable of getting back by ourselves. We don't always need somebody to reach down and save us. But there's going to be a time when you are going to need somebody. You can't always do it on your own. And it came, my trust that God is going to be there to reach down for me came with time. And it came through every single one of those waves that hit me. I got back up. And then I think, well, how does God save us in those instances? Sometimes it's not going to be a big moment. Uh, last year, Katie did the same thing that I'm doing right now, and she talked about her big moment. God proved to her two times 
that he was there. Somebody tapped her on the shoulder when she was like, okay, God, if you're real, have somebody tap me on the shoulder. And somebody tapped Katie on the shoulder. And then she said, okay, well, if you're so real, do it again. And then somebody did it again. I never got a moment where somebody tapped me on the shoulder. My, still waiting. I had to discover my faith through time and pain and experience. And I think that everybody is going to have a different journey in that way. Nobody is going to have the same moment. And so I figured out that God saves me with people. I love my youth group. Abby is my best friend in the whole world. We went to a concert together last week. We basically spend every minute together. I have other friends in school and on my basketball team and where I ride horses. And then, and then I think about God gave me passions. I love music, and it has brought me out of some really hard nights. And I love horses. They make me feel happy. He gives us things to hold on to that we may not even know is God. And sometimes it takes time to recognize things as a God thing. And that's what I finally figured out. He saves us with little things or big things, and it depends on the person. So I know that in the past year, it's been hard to find a faith. It's been hard to know what my faith is going to be about. And it's hard to know what I'm supposed to do. Sometimes I feel like I'm doing the right thing, but it feels wrong. Or sometimes I just fall down the stairs and nobody can tell me why I do it. But every single time I fall down, I get back up. Look at me now. And I think that it's really important to remember that no matter how alone you feel, you never really are. I felt so alone that one night freshman year. But when I look right now, if I would have told that, that little girl that she was going to talk at her church about her journey with her faith and how she doesn't feel alone anymore, she, she would have closed the door on me because I wouldn't have believed that. But I'm here. And that's living proof that things get better and that I was never alone. Thank you, Amy. Amy's story is one that probably a lot of us can relate to, times where we have felt those highs where God is with us and the lows where we just don't see God anywhere. Often when we hear that story from Scripture, uh, we, we think about Peter and we think about, oh, man, he, he was so brave. He gave it a shot. He tried walking on the water. I hope I someday can hop out of the boat. But we sometimes miss the key line he says in there is, um, you know, Lord, if it's really you, because they thought it was a ghost. Remember, Alex did a great job thinking, oh, no, it's a ghost. They thought it was a ghost. Um, he says, if it's you, call me out on the water. And Jesus says, yeah, come on out. Um, so Peter's not really doing this because of this amazing faith and that he's so strong and brave. He's doing it because he's, he's not sure. He has no idea. He's testing uh, Jesus. And a lot of times Jesus doesn't entertain those things. Sometimes he does. We heard, uh, we heard Katie's story, and sometimes God does entertain us when we, when we put things to the test. Um, in this case, he does. And um, earlier I shared with you guys how long it took for the disciples to figure it out. Even after this, they began to have those doubts. They crept up again. And the next time they would declare him to be the Son of God and worship him that way wasn't until he had died and came back. So doubt and even fear are normal parts of our journey with Christ and our journey of faith. But all, all along the way, we're not alone. I love that, that phrasing from Amy, we are not alone. In the early years of Christianity, uh, a boat was often a symbol to represent the church. Um, and I love the ending of that scripture story because Jesus doesn't just turn around and walk back across the water, he gets in the boat with them. Um, so our job is not necessarily to walk on water and, and prove who we are um, and prove who Jesus is all the time. Our job is to make space in the boat for, for Jesus to join us on that journey. So thank you, Amy, for your, um, your message with us this morning. I invite you all to a, a time of silent reflection. <laughs> 